If I was to give you a one word description of all the people that have made the greatest impression in my life for good, without reserve, I would have to use the beautiful word serenity. And I would love to tell you the reason why in just a moment of time, so don't go away. These people that have made an impression on me personally come from all walks and stages of life. Um, among them are loved ones who have gone home to heaven now because they trusted in the Lord Jesus and he was their Lord and Saviour. Some of them are historical figures who were also Christians. And of course, there are some Bible characters. John the Baptist comes to mind. Um, Barnabas, who was an encourager of the Lord's people and Mary of Bethany. To me, Mary of Bethany is the epitome of the character of serenity. She is a very dear woman to me and I can't wait to meet her. <laughs> the Bible mentions this incredible woman only a few times, but whatever is mentioned about her speaks volumes to my soul. And I'm gonna share a few things with you here and now. Mary makes her first appearance in the Bible when the account says that she was found seated at the feet of the Lord Jesus and hearing his word. You see, there was a house filled with people, Mary and Martha, her sister, and Lazarus, that invited everyone, because the Lord Jesus was there. They wanted everyone to come in and listen to what it was he had to say. And Martha was in the kitchen, preparing for refreshments afterwards. And it wasn't too long before she became a little burdened with her responsibility and she sought opportunity to speak with the Lord Jesus to bid Mary to come and help her and the Lord in his wonderful grace and kindness gave to her an answer that she probably least expected but this is what he said he said Martha Martha thou art careful and troubled about many things but one thing is needful Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. The Lord Jesus saw in the life of Mary, in her heart, something that he didn't see in the hearts of other people who were there. You see, Mary was hearing his word while others were listening to what he had to say. This tells me that there's a vast difference between Knowing Jesus as our saviour and knowing him intimately as the Lord and lover of our souls. Now, of course, it is of greatest importance to trust in him with all of our heart because he is the only means by which our sins can be forgiven and we can be guaranteed a home in heaven. But don't just leave it there. The Lord Jesus is a real person that we can get to know intimately, personally. And this is something that I believe Mary did with all of her heart. She knew the Lord Jesus intimately and loved him dearly. And this brought about in her heart a quietness and a confidence in the depths of her inmost being. Could anything be more beautiful than a quiet and confident spirit that Mary had? We've heard it said that we're rather like the ones that we love and I'm sure Mary loved the Lord Jesus and when you take a good look at him you see how wonderful he is and how beautiful is his character which tells me something that serenity must be ever so very beautiful. Now if we were to go forward about two or three years we'll find that a great sadness had come upon the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus Lazarus had become extremely ill and the sisters sent messengers off to the Lord Jesus to inform him that their brother was sick. And um, I wholeheartedly believe that not long after the messengers were sent, Lazarus died. Which might explain the reason why the Bible tells us that Jesus stayed for a couple more days after they left. Upon hearing that Lazarus was sick. 
Jesus said something that might appear to be rather unusual on the surface, and this is what he said. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. But we've just said and covered the fact that there's a possibility that Lazarus had died. So Jesus must be saying something different to them. And I believe that he's possibly saying, now, death is not the issue here. The greater importance is the glory of God. And sometime later, we're going to see that that is exactly the case. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus did stay for two more days after the messengers left. And then it was time for him to up and to go to the location where he was needed. And when he got there, Lazarus had been dead for four days already. But what was happening to Mary and Martha during that four day interim period? Well, of course, Lazarus had died and he was buried. And I believe there's a possibility that he got buried without being anointed. And we'll cover that in just a little while. And now Mary and Martha were in the process of mourning and news comes of Jesus coming to them. And Martha was the first person to rise up and to go and meet him. And she, with her broken heart, told him, Lord, if only you had been here, our brother had not died. And that was very true. But of course, we're going to learn that Jesus had a much better plan. Well, after a short conversation between the Lord Jesus and Martha, she hurried back to go and fetch Mary. And after a small conversation between him and Mary, the Lord gave commandment for the grave to be opened and he called for Lazarus by name, told him to come forth and he was presented to them alive. And he gave commandment for the grave clothes to be removed and um, great joy ensued. Well, this was a cause for wonderful celebration, I'm sure. And once again, all of the guests were in the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. And the Lord Jesus was there, and Lazarus was there, and Martha was in the kitchen working again. Only this time, this time it was a whole lot different for her. It is an amazing thing what can happen to the heart of a person once you've had a conversation with the Lord Jesus. Her attitude completely changed. She was more than happy to work in the kitchen this time and with joy in her heart she was preparing for later on when they would have refreshments. But where was Mary? Well, during the hum of conversation, Mary made her appearance. The silhouetted figure of the woman probably appeared in the doorway and she's holding a small alabaster box filled with ointment. And she waits for her opportunity to approach the Lord Jesus. And when she does, there is tear, her face is tear stained and she breaks the alabaster box and lets the contents pour out and falls to his feet and rubs the ointment into his feet, drying his feet with the hair of her head. I would imagine that a silence had come over the scene while her extravagant act of pure devotion was being carried out. And that silence was broken by an unkind remark from Judas, nonetheless. And his remark went something like this. That ointment's probably worth 300 pennies and that could have been sold and the money could have been given to the poor, which was met with a sharp rebuke from the Lord Jesus himself. And he said something like this, you leave her alone, for against the day of my burial has she done this. The poor you've always got with you, but me, you don't always have. It's quite possible, you know, that Mary was one of only a few, if not even the only one, who understood that the Lord Jesus was going to die one day very soon. She was quite possibly the only one who understood the reason why and what was going to happen three days later. She anointed the Lord Jesus' body before he died. The Bible tells us that there is a small company of women that made their way to the grave of the Lord Jesus when their opportunity came to anoint his body after he had died. But Mary of Bethany is not mentioned among those women. 
because she had already given her extravagant gift before he died. But what was she really doing in all of this? And why did she do this? May I suggest to you that she had this on her mind for quite some time before. Judas told us his estimation of the value of the ointment was 300 pennies worth, which is to be calculated to be roughly one year's wage. Now, in order for Mary to save up that rather large sum of money, she would have had to scrimp and to scrape and to do without for an extremely long time, a minimum of perhaps three years. Now, we read earlier on, or we covered earlier on the fact that Mary was sat at the feet of the Lord Jesus and hearing his word three years prior to this event. And I wonder if during that time, the Lord said something that indicated that this was going to happen in the future. And all of that time, she had been dedicating her savings towards giving to him an extravagant gift. But then something happened. Something terrible happened. Her brother had died and the circumstances changed and he became ill and died. And now what is she to do? Circumstances were now demanding that what she had set aside for the Lord is to now be given for the body of her brother. She either had the funds to purchase the oil or she already had it. And circumstances were demanding that the oil was to anoint the body of her brother. But she didn't do that. That was for the Lord and for him alone, and she kept it for him alone. Now, this I find is where Serenity's quietness and confidence comes into action, which tells me that when Serenity needs to be, Serenity is powerful. Mary's quietness and confidence in the Lord enabled her to keep what she had set aside for him in spite of the demanding and distracting circumstances. And her confidence in the Lord enabled her to give to him her extravagant gift in the face of um, harsh criticism. And such was the loveliness of this amazing gift that she gave. The Bible tells us that the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment Everybody benefited from this wonderful gift. And such was the power of this gift and the, the um, potency of the ointment. I do believe that when the Lord Jesus went all the way to the cross, there was still that aroma of her gift. And maybe there, while he was hanging on the cross, looking for comforters and finding none, perhaps a little waft of that beautiful fragrance would have reminded him of Mary and her love for him and her gift that said to him, I believe in you, when nobody else did. But there's something about Mary's quiet and confident character during good times, bad times and sad times that not only affected everybody in that house at that particular day, but I believe touched people's hearts in general. The Bible tells us that um, Many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things that Jesus did, believed on him. You see, there was something about Mary of Bethany that made it easy for others to trust in Jesus, which tells me something about serenity. Serenity is contagious. So um, watch out, it's catching. Who wouldn't want a character like this? Who wouldn't desire to have a confidence in the midst of all the circumstances, especially the ones that life throws at us occasionally? Um, Mary's character affected the lives of other people. And where did she get that? She found that by making time to be alone with him and listening carefully to every word he said. And that's where we're going to find a character and the ability to touch other people's lives as well. We've got to make the time to get alone to be with him. We've got to allow him all the time that he needs to speak to our soul 
and we've got to drink in every word and become so acquainted with him. The Bible says, acquaint yourself now with him and be at peace. And uh, that kind of peace and blessing that comes from an intimate knowledge of him creates within us a rest in our soul that nothing can disturb. And so, if God has laid it on your heart to dedicate yourself to him, or your resources, or your talents, or your gifts, that's for him alone. You can be pretty sure that circumstances are going to demand you to give that part of yourself or whatever it is you have to give to him in that direction. But you give that what you've set aside for him, make sure he gets it, and you will never be sorry. And I'll tell you something else, when you do, others won't be sorry either. Others are going to be affected by what you've given to him. And most important of all, the Lord Jesus is going to be touched by that giving. It will delight his heart. And what a wonderful thing that is, is to be able to have the ability to give and do something that reaches the heart of the very Son of God and delight his own soul. What an amazing thing that we learn from Mary of Bethany. And I trust that this is a blessing to your soul and a challenge also. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye now. Bye.